So I'm going to call to order the public hearing on our district-wide safety plan. If everyone can rise and I'll do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In case we have to evacuate the library, fire exits are back corners leading outside and the doorways leading into the hallway. Um, this is a mandated presentation on our district-wide safety plan. And I don't know if there's any other preface or contextual remarks that we need to say about it. Um, the safety plan, and I think maybe you'll speak to this, has numerous components of it, some of which are kept very confidential because mm -hmm. of the nature of them being yep. part of the safety plan. Exactly. <laughs> so this is Ed Martin. Good evening. Uh, 2001, um, the uh, State Education Department implemented the SAVE regulations, uh, Schools Against Violence in Education, primarily in response to incidents at Columbine. Uh, the SAVE le legislation uh, was the first time in that it came out as a statewide mandate that required background checks of school employees, fingerprinting, classroom violence intervention and prevention training for all certified instructional staff, uh, the creation of a district safety team, creation of building level safety teams, building level safety plans, and a district level safety plan. So tonight I'm here to tell you about the district level safety plan. Uh, it's required under 155.17 of SED, <clears throat> and it's highly uh, prescriptive. So there's not a lot of latitude that the district has other than that the State Education Department gives us 17 components that we have to address in the district safety plan. Those 17 components transcribe into the plan that's been out there that you reviewed for a month uh, to each of the chapters that are in that, that are contained in that document. <clears throat> so, district-wide safety plan means a comprehensive, multi-hazard school safety plan that covers all school buildings, school district, BOCES, blah, 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 <clears throat> addresses crisis intervention, emergency response, and management at the district level, and has the contents as pres prescribed in paragraph C1. So C1 actually gives us those 17 components, which are each of those subsections in the dual school district safety plan. When you open up the safety plan, you'll see those 17 components and the district's required to make a statement, a non-specific statement that says that we have something in place to address this issue and here's some information on it so that the public would be aware that we've got something in place. So what you have here is that document. The building level safety plans, which are also required, which are done with the building level safety teams, are specific to those buildings. They also protect it under, so that they are not foilable. They are protected class, or confidential documents for the use of those buildings. They're developed and refined annually by the uh, building level safety teams. <clears throat> the district plan went out for a one month review by the uh, district safety team. No comments came back because it is so prescriptive. It's pretty much a rollover from year to year. And that's the document that's here in front of you tonight for approval. And that's it. I know you said generally there's not any changes. Were there any changes for this year from prior years? In this year, yes, we did make a change to make reference to the two full-time school resource officers that we now have in the school district. And I believe that there was one change in one of the uh, required locations of the hazardous materials locations within the district for emergency response purposes. So it's been modified to reflect the addition of two full-time school resource officers. Thank you. Do any of the board members have any questions? And the building 
specific documents those are communicated as appropriate within the buildings themselves. that is correct the uh, there's a template that's also provided by the state for that which is more of a starting point a jump off uh, we have numerous uh, 60 pages of specific response action plans that uh, that are a district template that get tailored at the building level so that if this we're going to evacuate <coughs> For example, well, the Milton Terrace one will say where they're evacuating to if this should happen and who are the people that are in charge if that happens. So it is right down to the nuts and bolts of the actual execution of the operational plan. Okay. Again, any questions? Okay. We do have the opportunity for public comment on the district-wide safety plan. Is there anyone from the audience who chooses to? Could you approach the podium, please? Okay, uh, we we actually started the uh, started the trend and required special state ed uh, approval because we were the first school district in the state that made the move to the classroom function of security lock on our classroom doors, which means if you close the door in any of our classrooms and push the button, that door is locked to the outside. You do not have to go out into the hall because our concern was we had faculty that were out there fumbling with keys. If there was something going down in the hallway, that put them at risk. So close the door, push the button, and you're good to go. Okay, that's what I was hoping to get. Thank you. Sure. Okay, not hearing any other public comment. Uh, District Clerk, is there any other function we need to do regarding our no, there's public just, hearing? It's just the vote. You just uh, you know, uh, go to the next meeting. Right. We have a resolution yep. in the uh, a resolution in the the regular business meeting. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Does our clerk have any counsel or advice as to whether or not we should wait until 7 o'clock, our official I announced that, starting time for the... I believe that the meeting was posted as immediately following public hearing. We did have that posted, yes. So therefore you can move straight to your regular meeting. Okay. We will give Mr. Dreher a moment to sit. Okay, so um, I'm going to adjourn the public hearing on district-wide safety plan, and we don't need a vote on that, I don't think. Um, so we are adjourned, and then I am going to call to order the regular meeting of the Boston Spa Central School District Board of Education meeting, September 7th, 2022. Just a point of information for those coming in. We did. Um, recognized the, the flag and did the Pledge of Allegiance at the beginning of our uh, public hearing on the district-wide safety plan. I will reiterate again, our exits um, from the library are in the back corners outside and also the doorway that leads into the hallway. If for any reason we had to um, evacuate the library. So first off, good evening to all those attending in person, to those watching on the live stream. I'm thrilled that our school year has begun. Seeing the pictures posted on our district website of students arriving in the buses, 
uh, pictures of the students with our staff and administration and SROs um, were absolutely wonderful to see. It's great to see the enthusiasm in both the students and our staff members. So classes are in session. The academic work has begun for the year. Fall sports, there have been some games that have already taken place at the varsity and junior varsity level. Modified practices are underway. All of the extracurricular activities should be available to our students this year. And many thanks to all our advisors for the clubs and extracurriculars and our coaches um, for the sport to support our students in these endeavors. I do want to address that we have had some transportation delays in terms of dismissals from schools, arrivals at bus stops at homes in our first two days, uh, the um, inconvenience to parents, uh, we absolutely uh, recognize and um, uh, apologize for. Traditionally, on the first day at least, there are some delays. We have communicated that out. Yesterday, it was a little bit uh, longer than anticipated. And um, later in the meeting, Dr. Duca is going to speak to that, describe the efforts being made to uh, achieve improvements each day. And um, my understanding is that from all reports today, was um, better than yesterday. I also want to address the resignation of our interim superintendent, Dan Connor, last week. Though unexpected, um, with every challenge comes an opportunity, and the board quickly announced to our staff the intention to appoint Dr. John Leo Duca as the interim superintendent so that the staff would have a leader and a single point of contact for support during the opening days. The resolution to make that appointment official is on our agenda tonight, and later um, Dr. Duca will speak to the planning and actions that are already underway to make sure that our high school is properly supported during this period as he transitions to our interim superintendent. And with that, we will move on in our agenda. Do we have any recognition from the district tonight? Not that we're aware of. Any recognition from board members? Any particular activity? OK. Our student government. Um, Selena? Um, hi. Um, for announcements today, we have our spirit week coming up for the week of Monday, September 26th. We do have it printed out on the table as you walked in. Um, it has been sent to all of the elementary and middle schools, and we will be hanging up posters in the high school shortly. We also have themes for every day, and we will have hallway decorating for the classes and clubs, as well as the opportunity to do window decorating that you'll be able to see from the outside of the school this year. Um, during this Spirit Week on Tuesday, September 27th, we have our pep rally and powder puff game from 6 to 9 p.m. Um, during our pep rally, we have a bunch of fun games planned, like a pie eating contest, musical chairs, tug of war, and more. And for Powder Puff, it will be directly after the pep rally. Um, we are charging $5 for admission, and our rain date is Wednesday, the day after. On Friday of that same spirit week, we will have our street fair before the homecoming football game. We will give clubs and um, student class councils the opportunity to be vendor, or be hold booths and like backyard games and possibly a face paint station for school spirit. We also are hoping to get vendors from the community so that there will be food present before the homecoming game. And then on Saturday, the day following the game, we will have our homecoming dance. That will be October 1st. And we plan to decorate in the morning and hold the dance that night. And I think that's it for us recently. After we finish our Spirit Week during September, we plan to hold a lot more volunteer service during the months of November and December with toy drives and food drives for Thanksgiving. Great, and just to confirm, the street fair is the Thursday night? Um, that would be the 29th, I think? I believe it's right before the homecoming game on Thursday, but I will double check. It's, it's on the Friday before yeah. the game. 
yes. in the afternoon. I am sorry. So it's That'll Friday. September 30th, I believe. And that is held in the bus loop out yes. front? Okay, wonderful. Any other questions for our student government representative? Thank you very much for the presentation. And I imagine you have homework already? Yeah. So feel free to excuse yourself from the meeting. We are now at the time in our agenda for the first opportunity for public comment. Thank you. So we do have people signed up for public comment. The Board of Education welcomes our district residents, parents, other interested people to its meeting. Community involvement at our board meetings is encouraged so that the board can better understand, represent the views of our constituents. Please be aware that information such as individual student information or particular personnel issues cannot be discussed at the public comment sessions of the boards. Speakers will be called upon individually. When recognized by the board president, will be asked to approach the podium, state your name and residence. Statements are restricted to a maximum of two minutes. Speakers will be notified by the board president when his or her time has expired. And for those of you who have been here before, I generally try when we're at close to the three minute mark to um, ask uh, the speaker to please conclude their remarks. I certainly don't gavel anyone quiet at two minutes exactly. Um, the board and the district staff take this public comment very seriously. However, the board will not respond to comments or questions during the public comment period. The board asks the public's cooperation, maintaining a safe and respectful environment. Board president reserves the right to limit individual comments if it is deemed necessary. To achieve this, speakers will not make slanderous attacks on any groups, organizations, or individual. A member of the board, an employee of the district, a member of the audience, or a member of the public. Please no profane, vulgar, threatening, or disparaging language or racial or ethnic slurs. We've never had a challenge with that in our district. Um, and please do not disrupt the meeting with loud outbursts or other disruptive conduct or behavior, either during a speaker's assigned time or at any other time during the meeting. Um, speakers will be given the privilege of the floor while they speak and the floor is theirs. Speakers understand that a failure to comply with these rules for maintaining a respectful and productive environment may result in early termination of the speaker's allotted time, denial of future requests to speak and any other actions deemed necessary by the president of the board or where appropriate, if in case of a health and safety measure, the superintendent of schools. First up for comment, Aaron Terizi. I'm sorry, we're just gonna try and make sure this is a little louder so everyone can hear you. Thank you. Um, so on August 3rd, this board voted in favor of the policy um, on student gender identity. Um, I spoke at that meeting and I voiced my concern that parents were not notified of this policy before it was being voted on. I know it was posted for the um, minimum amount of days that it needed to be posted, but parents were not aware that it was posted. I also voiced concern about the policy itself, stating that it would be put all students at risk, including our transgender population. I also asked where the parent-school collaboration was. Why are the parents not included in the decisions that are affecting their kids? On August 4th, an email went out to the entire district and was also broadcast on Channel 6 News, saying some parents feel transgender students are dangerous. I, along with many other parents, have asked the author of that email to retract his statements as that was not what was stated. It has been 34 days and still has not happened. So I'm here to set the record straight that that is not what those parents, myself and, and the rest of those parents were implying. That email alone has divided our community. Those that were not in attendance believe that that email, they believed it, and they were angry at the parents that, that were able to attend. Little by little, the truth of that meeting, the one that was conveniently not live streamed, is coming out. 
and a trust has been broken in our community. Since that meeting, I've sent three follow-up emails with questions. I've been told they were shared with the entire board. Not all of those questions have been answered. Um, and the ones that have been answered were not acceptable solutions. I asked about gender fluidity. Does our district abide by that? Do they believe in that? Is that something that, you know, if a student says one day that they're a girl and the next day they're a boy, is, is that something that our, our district is um, looking into and if, that's, if they believe in that. I also asked if a student, any student, trans or not, harms someone in the bathroom, what will happen? The response was that he or she will have consequences. But my question to you right now is what, what about that victim? What about the victim that, that it already happened to? In my eyes, if something happens to even one student, the board should be held accountable for not taking proper precautions, for being reactive instead of proactive, for lack of collaboration and cooperation with parents and members of the community, and for putting our children at risk. I am again gonna ask the board, which I've asked in my emails, to consider a parent committee so that we can discuss decisions and collaborate together to do what's right for our children. We teach our kids how to collaborate and cooperate and work with others, and I'm, I'm unsure why the board isn't setting that example as well. I would like to ask each and every one of you, what is your why? You chose to be on this board, why? Was it to divide the community, to have control over the policies being approved, to cause disrupt anxiety and fear, or was it to bring the community together, make our district a place that parents want to send their kids, make our district one that stands out in positive ways, help our students thrive in a safe educational environment? That's what I wanna ask you today. What is your why? Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Jason Severia. My name is Jason Severia, live down the road at uh, 936 Route 67. Um, I challenged the book titled Gender Queer back in early May of this year. I'm still waiting for, for a decision from the committee that was formed to review it. The decision is now just about two months past the 60 days I was promised. I'd like a decision on that uh, from that committee as soon as possible. So my daughters came home from school yesterday uh, after their first day and my youngest came in and this is a conversation that we had. I said, hi sweetheart, how was your first day of school? She replied, it was good, but I had to choose a pronoun. I said, what do you mean you had, you had to choose a pronoun? My daughter responded, in my enhanced math class, we were asked to form a com community circle and put our book bags outside the circle. The teacher told us to be truthful. Then the teacher said, when it's your turn, you say your name and your pronoun. I responded, so what did you say? My daughter said, I used she, her. I said, why did you use a pronoun? My daughter said, I felt like I had to because all the kids had to. To which I responded, how did that make you feel? My daughter said, I was very uncomfortable and confused why I had to use a pronoun. This action happened to both of my daughters in seventh and eighth grade. Both shared eerily similar stories, both confused, and both left feeling very uncomfortable. So please tell me again, who is protecting my daughter's mental well-being while she's here. Where was her opt-out choice? My daughters were not given a choice to opt out. The teachers forced an ideological belief on my daughters that left them feeling extremely uncomfortable and confused. Way to go, teachers. Lastly, at the last board meeting, I asked the president of the board to resign for sowing division in our community using the district email system. 
I see that the president is still sitting at the table, so I'm asking again, resign. The actions of the president are not indicative of a leader. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. Charlene Dubuque. The only voices can't be those of bigotry and socially constructed ignorance. Let's take a stand against parents who speak out in hate. I can't believe parents in our community want to do harm to trans kids. These are a few quotes from local community members, each in direct response to the divisive email that was sent out by the board president on August 4th. This email claimed that the parents who spoke up at the meeting on August 3rd used harmful and out of date rhetoric concerning trans youth. The truth though, is that parents came to that meeting and asked the board to put a pause on voting on new policies, to instead get feedback from the community and to ensure that parental concerns and questions were answered before moving forward. Now, I don't know or even care what's being said online, but how dare you link the comments of concerned parents who were at that board meeting to a bunch of trolls on the internet. The trustees on this board were voted in to lead. A leader does not shame those that they are tasked to lead. They guide and educate them. A leader listens to concerns. They provide clarity and offer solutions. A true leader does not divide, they unite. Instead, the email sent out by this board on August 4th has pitted community member against community member. Most of us did not attend the last meeting on August 24th because we're not here to face off with fellow teachers and parents. No, we are here to make sure that this board is doing what's right for our students and to hold this district accountable. The strongest schools are those with active parents, teacher collaboration, and an administration that supports relationship building among different stakeholders. I attend these meetings to ensure that my kids go to a school that provides educational excellence, a positive environment, and helps to, pre to prepare them for adulthood. Tonight, though, I am here as a Scotty, and I refuse to be divided for, by my, from my community. Board, I ask that you all remember our district motto, Educating everyone takes everyone. Thank you. Next up, Steve Galish. My name is Steve Gillish and I live in the town of Milton. This will be my fourth time addressing the Board of Education meeting here in Balsam Spa. I've attended nearly every public meeting at this school since last year, August of last year. Since that time, I've noticed a deterioration in your relationship with the parents, taxpayers who have come before you. You've resorted to name calling, labeling, instead of listening and considering opposing views. Your public meetings are frankly a rubber stamping formality. Not once in the past year have I heard anyone, repeat anyone in the board, dissent or object to a proposal, not once. Every single time a vote's taken is completely unanimous. This is clearly something wrong with this picture. I've never in all the years I participated in meetings or sat on boards where everyone agreed with everything. More often than not, someone had an opposing view or an alternate solution to a challenge, but not here in Boston Spa. This year has been challenging for this board, but it's challenging due to mostly in part poor decision making and irresponsibility. In May of this year, a parent discovered child pornography in the high school library. In July of this year, a longtime teacher was arrested for sexual abuse of at least four children under the eight, under thir or around 13. In August, you chose to amend and adopt a disastrous policy to allow biological males and females to share bathroom, locker rooms, and even involved in sports, all in the name of inclusion. You have placed our children in danger, and I'm, I'm not talking, I'm talking about all children, boys, girls, 
transgender, non-binary, all children. Finally, just before the beginning of the school year, the acting school superintendent suddenly resigned for personal reasons. I think many of us can appreciate as to what those personal reasons might be. I do not speak to you tonight in order to berate you or the sake of the public humiliation, nor do I, nor do I speak to bring attention to myself for any acclamation in this community. Instead, I want to again offer a solution, one that will help to reunite the community and to provide an opportunity for the board to lead with unity. This is not a new suggestion, but one I feel is urgently important and must be mentioned yet again. A number of parents have begged, pleaded with you as a board to consider a parent advisory board to come alongside the school board to be a liaison to the community and to support the transparency and accountability. Tonight you have another opportunity to not just listen, but to truly hear the concerns of those who have spoken and to respond with open-mindedness. Part of that open-mindedness is to consider the positive impact that a parent community advisory board will have on our district. We have many talented and gifted individuals who could provide significant support, insight, and valuable solutions to many of your challenges in our district. I strongly request that you consider the benefits of this opportunity for the board of the district and the community. In closing, I firmly believe that you as a board need a new direction. As of right now, the policies you have in place regarding the new gender policy will not succeed. They will fail no matter the frequency of your amendments. Like it, or not, like it or not, all of us are going to be held accountable and will be held accountable. You will be accountable to the voters, the parents, the taxpayers of this school district for the decisions that you have made and will make. You will be held accountable for standing. We, on the other hand, will be held accountable for taking the courage and standing up for truth and for the well-being of our children in the community. But even more important, we will all be accountable to God. Thank you. Thank you. Christopher Dubuque. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen on the board. Chris Dubuque, Kayleen Drive, Boston Spa. As you heard tonight, there was obviously a lot of concern amongst the community based on what happened after the meeting on August 3rd and the letter that went out on August 4th. And I was listening to a few people speak. I usually come unprepared and just speak from the heart and what comes to the my, my mind uh, as I listen to other people speak. And this reminded me of a speech that I had the privilege of being present to back in 2021 that our former superintendent, I've had my disagreements with him, but I have to give him credit for that speech. It was a great speech. And I suggest if you weren't there, as I do see some new faces that weren't on the board at the time and did not witness that speech, find a recording of it. I'm sure you can out there. But what was discussed during that speech was false dichotomy. And what we need to teach the class of 2021 and all future classes is to stop falling into camps. BLM, back the blue. Republican, Democrat. Pro-vax, anti-vax, pro-mask, anti-mask. Life is not black and white. There's always shades of gray in between. And unfortunately, when we go and we support the narrative towards one policy and demonize the narrative of those who may disagree with that policy, especially in a public forum, that doesn't build community. That polarizes community. And one thing I've learned working with kids and also being a father, they're always watching us. They're always learning from us. Teachers, support staff, administrators, they're watching this board. They're watching decisions you make. They're watching notices that you put out to the community. And unfortunately, we're setting a very dangerous example when a letter goes out that says there were members of the community that were both out of date and harmfully pushing a narrative. Again, that trans youth would be a danger to any youth. That was never said, that was never brought up at all during that meeting. I witnessed every single speech. And again, you ask, well, 
what's, we just want to be inclusive. We want to support everybody. We want to support their emotional learning. I will end with this one story. I just want to tell you of an incident that happened last year. I understand where you're coming from as a board. I understand what comes to mind when you think of some of the policies that you're voting aye to. And I remember my son in middle school last year was in a class, and again, it was during Pride Month, and the teacher was just doing what she thought was probably right at the time and was passing out flags for all the students to show that they support everybody in their community in their class. My son did not take one of those flags. And unfortunately, the backlash he got from his fellow students, calling him homophobic, you name it, it was disgusting. And my son, his older brother, my other son, is openly gay. So why would he need to take a flag to support a community when he has nothing but love for his brother? And when his brother wasn't supported in his own community at times, my son was the one to ask him, would you like to play Minecraft? Would you like to spend some time with me? Yet he did not feel that same love from his community, all because he would not support the narrative that you need to accept this flag in order to show that you support this community. So one thing I do whenever I come to these meetings is I provide a solution. I have foot and mouth disease, I'll be the first to admit it, but sometimes when you're a leader, you have to admit you made a mistake. You probably shouldn't have put out that email. I did ask for a response on there, I wrote in person, because again, it's not too late to shift this narrative. There's many people here in this community that were negatively impacted by that email that went out, that were demonized in their own community. Now's your chance, not through email, not through a public notice, and maybe this is my out of date thinking, apologize in person tonight to everybody here and at home who may be watching. That's true leadership. Thank you. Thank you for your comment. That hey, Jason. concludes the first. I'd like to make um, just a, a point of clarification because uh, on multiple occasions I've been hearing about this, the email and what it said and what it didn't say. Um, <clears throat> just so my board members, um, uh, talking to them, that we did get communication prior to the October 3rd meeting that had language of uh, extreme concern and violence to it, uh, as well as in that meeting, I will say on October 3rd, the giant narrative was concerned for your children um, and the cisgender population. I totally recognize that, but there were absolutely identifications of incident in Virginia that was in, uh, making comments to um, a potential sexual assault by a transgender if that policy were to go through. So I wish that um, meeting was recorded. I was there, I think there is some other uh, recordings of it somewhere else, not from the district. Um, but I wanted to just have that clarification for the board here. Um, and thank you. Right, and I want to remind all the board members that our meeting policy 1510 does allow statements to correct fact or specifically if someone wants something on the record, but that that should be used um, with great thought. Thank you for your comment, Law. Uh, next on our agenda, approval of the minutes from the August 24th, 2022 meeting. We are going to table that item. We've not had enough time for proper review. And next up in our agenda, we are gonna have a report from Dr. Duca on high school pathways. of the board thank you very much for allowing me to make this presentation um, tonight I have put together uh, just a few slides on a lot of the opportunities and pathways that we offer um, our students here at Boston Spa High School 
these are really in no particular order. I just wanted to highlight a lot of the programs and, and different things that, that we do for everyone here. Um, so I'll start with Spa Academy. This is something that is um, near and dear to me. This is something that we started to develop um, right around 2019, kind of got paused a little bit with, with the pandemic, and we were able to pilot it last year. Um, and, and Spa Academy is, a, is a, uh, essentially a school within a school model. We do house it off campus at, um, off of Exit 12 at the Hudson Valley uh, TechSmart facility. Um, and so this program is geared towards uh, students who you know, have uh, anxiety, um, maybe just are not a fit for a traditional high school of this size. Um, they feel that it might be too big for them, too many people, and it really takes away from their education trying to, um, you know, put things in place to help them, to support them. Uh, and so it's a modified school day. It, the students at Spa Academy are still, um, you know, our students. I always meet with the parents and students and say, you know, I'm still your principal. Um, the goal is to graduate with a Regents level diploma, but it gives us a lot of flexibility. So we have students that go to BOCES in the morning and then over to Spa Academy. Um, it's a 10.45 to 3 o'clock school day. Um, and it, it allows a lot of students uh, the opportunity to get a good quality education. Um, with just some supports in place. So some of the stats from last year, we had a 97% attendance rate, which is pretty amazing because a lot of these students um, didn't really step foot in a school for a year or two. Really had a lot of chronic absenteeism issues. Didn't feel comfortable in a traditional high school. So we created this, we had a 97% attendance rate. Um, 10 of our seniors last year graduated from this program. Um, we had 15 students. Um, upperclassmen, 11th and 12th graders, taking uh, college in, in the high school courses through Hudson Valley. Um, we put out a student survey, and you can see a lot of the, you know, a lot of the positives that came through of that student survey. Going into this year, we have 55 of our students, grades 9 through 12, enrolled, which leads us a little bit of flexibility. Um, so as we get to know students, and, and uh, either some some are new to the district, some are some of our ninth graders coming into the building. Um, or students that we see are just struggling in a traditional school. We do have some flexibility to uh, change their program and get them over to Spa Academy to help them be successful. Um, next up, I wanted to kind of move into um, advanced placement. So we offer 14 courses here at the high school. Um, and this past May, we administered 380 AP exams. Um, and I put down some, some statistics here. Everything highlighted in yellow is where the Boston Spa um, high school average beat New York State average as far as exam results went for advanced placement. And so this is pretty, you know, something that we're pretty proud of here at the high school because we came off of a really uh, tumultuous, you know, two and a half years. Things weren't traditional. We had remote learning. We had hybrid learning. And so last year was really the first year um, where we were back. Um, and we, we took, you know, these exams. And we did really well across the board. Um, you know, AP exams are rated one to five. So you can see, you know, from this slide that, that we really did well in a lot of our exams. And we're continuing to offer advanced placement coursework to all our students. Uh, we have a lot of students who their senior year, they want to challenge, they want to try it. They want to see if, if, if it's something they can do. And we certainly encourage that. So we have a lot of students that their senior year take an AP course and they're successful with it. And that's just a testament to our staff um, who work extremely hard to you know, create these opportunities for students and support them. Um, you know, career in tech ed, career in technical education. Uh, again, something that, that's pretty close to me. Um, you know, my, my dad's a welder by trade. Um, and so we're trying to create a lot of these CTE opportunities for our students as early as ninth grade. And so you'll see here, we kind of have two strands that we have a CTE endorsement for students. Uh, business education, so we have the business management entrepreneurship, uh, marketing, and then technology. We, we have a pretty extensive, um, you know, construction strand, building sciences, where uh, one of the things that we're really proud of, um, you know, out back by the baseball field, we have the tiny home construction, where we basically layer a lot of our classes into doing hands-on work. Um, so we have our, our basic principles of education, or excuse me, basic principles of construction course, and that is like the course that gets you into this strand. And then from there, some of our students take house wiring, plumbing, um, HVAC, um, carpentry, cabinetry. So as they work through the course, they layer on and they, they get hands-on experience out back at, at, at a 
pretty much a construction site with the tiny home built. So it gives our kids a lot of hands-on experience there. And then as juniors, you know, we have some students who may choose to apply to attend a CDTE, CTE program at BOCES, um, which is also a you know, fantastic opportunity for them. Um, not to go off on a tangent, uh, you know, so Labor Day, you know, I'm getting ready for first day of school and, and now my sink starts to back up. <laughs> and so I try to do what I can. I change out the garbage disposal, it's still backing up, so I have to call the plumber. So he comes and he changes, so we get talking. And, and really, you know, he, he went to an area school, um, attended Hudson Valley for half a semester and realized that, you know what, it wasn't the right track for him. Went and did an apprenticeship and now he's talking to me about it was the greatest thing he did. He's a plumber, he's talking to me about the wages and, and, and how it, it really helped him, you know, be successful. He's got a, he's got a young family. Um, and so these are some of the opportunities that we're trying to bring kids here at the high school. Um, just to make sure that we, we are offering a wide multitude of things for our kids to be successful outside, you know, once they leave us. Um, another thing that we're pretty proud of, you know, we were able to pilot the New York State Seal of Civic Readiness. And, and so this is a seal that recognizes students' work not only in um, social studies, but also community engagement. And so we had a committee um, last year, and we pulled this together through the work of, of the committee. And we were able to pilot this program, and we were able to award uh, 100 and, excuse me, 187 diploma seals to our graduating seniors. And so we were one of 50 schools in New York State to pilot this, and the 187 diploma seals actually made up 2% of the total number of seals across New York State, which is pretty amazing. Um, and, 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 you know, again, helping our students understand that being a good, a good member of the community, civic leadership is really important. So this is something that we're also very proud of. Um, another pathway for students is our seal of, of biliteracy, uh, which I believe we've had for, I want to say, seven years. Um, and again, this is to help recognize high school graduates who've, who've attained a, a level of proficiency in both a language. Here at the high school, we offer Spanish and French, and also English. And so last year, this seal was awarded to 66 of our graduating seniors. Um, college and the high school um, programming. So this is something that, um, you know, I, so many of our students take advantage of. We have 14 courses through Hudson Valley for, for, for dual credit. Uh, we have 21 courses through Schenectady Community College, four courses through Adirondack Community College, and we have 15 courses through the University of Albany. And so our teachers teach these courses. They're essentially adjunct um, professors, and so our kids are able to not only get high school credit for these courses, but then they'll, they'll achieve the, the three college, three or four college credits there, and a lot of these credits transfer into other schools. So when they leave us, we've had students leave us with um, just about one or a little bit more than a year of college pretty much finished, um, which is super helpful to them in, in their career path. So um, we're always looking to expand. We started the partnership with Hudson Valley here. Um, that's why these 14 courses through Hudson Valley, that's new from last year. Um, and so we're always looking to expand and improve opportunities for our kids. Um, IB, International Baccalaureate, uh, I listed the courses, and this kind of changes year to year depending on enrollment, so sometimes we offer different classes. This is the lineup of classes that we're offering this particular school year, um, a, a wide range, you know, you'll see year one, year two, um, HL stands for, uh, you know, high level, SL stands for standard level. Um, so any of our students can take an SL level course, so you don't have to be um, a full IB student to enroll and try an IB course at the SL level. Um, the HL is, is for students who enroll in the IB diploma program, um, but any of our students. So sometimes we have students who, want, who again, want to give it a shot. They want to try it their junior, senior year. They take, um, one of the popular ones is, is History of the Americas year one. Um, and so we'll have a lot of students that try that course um, and, and are successful. Um, and again, the same type of graphic that I had for the advanced placement, I've highlighted um, the, the, the scores, and so IB does a, a world average. So, you know, to the left you see, you know, Boston Spa's average versus the world average. So, again, you know, last year, um, in, in a year back, um, we did very well. You know, again, our, our kids work super hard. Um, they prepare so hard for these exams. Our teachers prepare them so hard. Um, we just are very proud of, you know, and it's not all about test scores. You know, these kids are getting a good quality education, but I did want to highlight that. Um, for everybody here. And again, the, the IB scores, AP goes one through five, IB is one through seven, just to kind of give, give you some, some idea here. Um, 
So summer school, this past summer, uh, was the first time in, I, I think a decade, maybe more, that we offered an in-house summer school program. And this was out of a necessity, really. We had some kids that, you know, unfortunately, they did fall behind during the pandemic. So we wanted them to offer them, you know, a, a qu some quality coursework over the summer that would allow them to earn credits towards graduation. Um, typically in the summer, we, we kind of relied on a credit recovery program, which isn't the same as being in a classroom, getting that instruction uh, from a teacher. So we had 111 students attend summer school here. Uh, it was a six-week program, Monday through Thursday. Um, and we were, we were able to award 22 course credits to those students. So we caught a lot of students back up who may have fallen a little bit behind during the pandemic. Um, and this is something that we're going we're to stick to. We, we, we really did a, um, a really nice job with summer school this past summer. Um, and it allows us to get those kids back on cohort. And so one of the things that I did want to highlight is, you know, typically a cohort is, a, is four years, um, but it also can count as five or six. So I'll give you an example. This past graduating class, we had 14 students who didn't graduate on cohort. Um, that doesn't, they're not dropouts. They are back with us because sometimes it takes a little longer for a student to get the diploma, and we certainly understand that. And so we have, you know, 14 students who we're looking to try to get, to try to get that diploma in June. Um, some will graduate early in January because they had to finish a few classes. Um, but, but they are still ours, and, and our goal is to get them that high school diploma so that they can have those opportunities when they leave us. Uh, and so sometimes it does take kids a little bit longer, especially the last two, two and a half years. We did see some kids fall behind a little bit, but we're sticking with them, we're providing supports for them, um, and, and we, will, we are committed to making sure that they cross the stage, they have that diploma so they can go on and either go to a college, uh, get into the workforce, <coughs> military. These are all opportunities that we talk to our students about. Um, and then something that came about um, last spring that I just wanted to highlight. Um, so we created a ninth grade transition committee last spring here at the high school. And really that collaboration led to a lot of changes for the 22-23 school year. Um, we were able to add a ninth grade transition coordinator. Uh, so it's an assistant principal who works here at the high school exclusively um, with our ninth grade. Um, you know, dealing with, uh, you know, students who may need extra support, some chronic absenteeism, liaison to the parents, liaison to the staff. Um, we, we took it up, we went ahead and revamped our ninth grade orientation. Um, and so for anybody who came to ninth grade orientation, I thought it was really successful. The past few years, we, we would have the students go and visit their classes, uh, you know, for five minutes each class. Not a lot can get done in those five minutes. So we changed all that. Uh, we still kept the parent program, but we had the students go in three different um, groups, 20 minute groups. And so we had some students here in the library with myself and Mr. Matice and we talked about, uh, you know, just a Q&A with me. Uh, I asked a lot of, you know, they asked me a lot of questions, kind of put them at ease about what high school is like. Do you have any concerns? Do you have anything you're nervous about? We talked a little bit about character ed. Uh, we did a meet and greet um, with high school counselors in the gymnasium. Um, and then in the cafeteria, uh, we had a, just a code of conduct talk with some of our other um, administrators and deans, and just talking about processes and procedures that we have here, what to do. Um, and so I thought that was a, a, a really nice change into what we have done. And so that's something that I think we'll continue to improve upon um, and, and keep for future. Um, we also made some changes to the master schedule. I went ahead when we build the master schedule, um, trying to add more sections for ninth grade to lower the class sizes to help it make you know a little bit more support in those ninth grade classes. Um, and then we took a lot of our study halls and we utilized the space in the cafeteria for a bunch of periods a day. Um, and that's where we house a lot of our 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And we tried to have ninth grade classrooms, uh, excuse me, ninth grade study halls exclusively in classrooms, which gives us uh, an opportunity to push in and check in with those ninth graders to provide that level of support. Um, we're creating uh, what we like to call situational awareness videos. So really, uh, things that could happen in the hallway, like if you don't have a pass and a monitor asks you, how should you react? Should you just say, I don't have a pass, I came from here? Um, you know, you know um, anything having to do with you know, potentially clubs and activities, just kind of a for your information type of thing for our freshmen um, so we can have them uh, really feel part of our high school community. That transition from eighth grade to ninth grade is so super important, and we wanted to provide a lot of supports for those kids coming into the high school. Um, and so that is really, you know, the 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 
gist of this presentation. You know, I just, we like to provide opportunities, and I talk to people all the time. It's one thing to say, hey, there are all these opportunities here for you. It's a totally different thing to teach students how to seize that opportunity, create a goal for themselves, and, and really take off and run with it. Um, and so, you know, together, we'll continue to help our students become college and career ready. Um, so that's what I have for you tonight. Questions from the board members? I just have a comment. Um, Spa Academy, yep. I, my opinion, in my opinion, having that off campus is huge. I know several schools have those type of opportunities, yeah. but the fact that we can offer it off campus yeah. is the reason for your success. A hundred percent. You know, I, I visited a lot of different districts and they all have it someplace housed. Maybe not at the high school, some people, or excuse me, some <coughs> districts used their district office, things like that. We're so lucky and fortunate to have that facility, to have that relationship with Hudson Valley. And I agree, it, it wouldn't work the way it does without having it off campus. Yep, thank you. Other questions or comments? I've got a couple of things. Um, for, first, I just wanna make sure that we recognize some of the people who are uh, supporting these programs. For the Spa Academy, we have a new assistant principal yeah. this year. Yeah, we have Mr. Scott Seligman. So he was the, the person I talked about as the transition coordinator. Um, so he is here at the high school in the morning working with our freshmen and then has oversight of Spa Academy in the afternoons. Perfect, and I was gonna ask about our ninth grade coordinator, but it's the same person. And for our summer school, that was Ms. McTiernan this year? Uh, uh, so Ms. McTiernan ran summer success K-5. Okay. Uh, Mr. Kevin Flores ran uh, summer school, had oversight of summer school here at the high school. He did a phenomenal job. Thank you. Again, wanted to recognize sure. them for their support and work. And um, can you just speak to uh, some of the differences in our career and technical education? So Boston Spa School District is very um, fortunate that we're able to offer programs within our school district itself but we also have the partnership with the Wish We BOCES and the programs that they offer there. Yeah. So can you just speak to sure. why some students may do one program versus yeah. the other? I sure imagine it, 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 some of it has to do with content yeah, and what a lot the programs of it has to do are. With content. But so a lot of our kids go, you know, um, apply for BOCES for things such as uh, cosmetology, uh, culinary, heavy machine, uh, heavy equipment, I should say, welding, things that we don't offer here. Um, you know, these programs, and, and one of the things I, I forgot to mention was the digital communications. Um, so we're, we have, we took a computer lab, um, obviously we're one-to-one -one Chromebooks, it wasn't a huge need for the computer lab, we revamped it into a TV studio. So we're working on getting that endorsement for digital communications. Um, so we, we have students that will take um, engineering, different courses as ninth graders. Um, basic principles of construction is, is a big one for our ninth graders. Um, and, and, and that allows them to start to move towards the, the CTE coursework earlier um, than you know, 11th to 12th grade, which is when we send kids to BOCES. Um, having them in-house for some of these programs is really helpful for those students because then we can provide that layer of support um, throughout the day. You know, obviously when they go to BOCES, either AM or PM, they're off-site. Um, some students feel more comfortable being here all day, so we want to make sure that we have those opportunities for our kids here um, who might not feel comfortable going off-site to a BOCES. Thank you for that um, expansion. And I don't have anything else, so okay. if that's it from all the board members, thank you very much, thank Dr. You. Duca. Committee reports, um, there were no committee meetings, there's no committee meetings scheduled for uh, this uh, meeting tonight. Um, we had said that the next policy committee meeting was to be determined as to whether or not it would be at the um, September 21st meeting. And I just want to share that we've decided that we're going to postpone that um, policy committee meeting until the second meeting in October, which I think is the 17th, but don't hold me to that. Um, and so part of the postponement of that policy committee meeting is making sure that we have all the mechanisms in place
to be able to communicate out ahead of time, make materials available to the public, et cetera. Correspondence. I'm not sure we have anyone to speak to correspondence to the district. Uh, correspondence to uh, the board. We did receive since the last meeting, I would say two or three communications related to our gender policy approval and related to the board president's communications. Announcements. Mr. Williams. Thank you. Just a couple quick things tonight. The um, meet the teacher nights start next week. So we're, everybody's back in the schools, obviously, and, and parents are invited to come back in um, to the schools during the evening, starting on the 15th with our Clean Tech Early College High School, um, welcoming the parents out there to our TechSmart facility um, to learn about the program out there. And it'll be followed by Gordon Creek on September 20th um, with the rest of the schools following in the, in the next week after that. Um, and then as we heard earlier, the Homecoming Spirit Week is September 26th through the 30th with the big day being the 30th and then their Homecoming Dance on the 1st. Um, they'll be putting out more information as we go through the, the next coming weeks. And your next regular board meeting is September 21st here in the library. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Any announcements from board members? I just want to share with everyone that you should have received an email regarding a joint meeting of the Adirondack Area School Board Association and the Saratoga County School Boards Association. So these are um, parent groups, umbrella groups that bring together board members from all of the various, uh, in the case of the county, um, the, uh, the districts within Saratoga County. In the case of the Adirondack area, it's actually uh, school districts from, I think, the five counties that make up the Wish We BOCES. So the um, meeting is on Thursday, September 22nd. It's up in Lake George. And um, I encourage anyone who can make those meetings to do so. Generally, during the course of the year, there is three or four meetings. The Saratoga County School Boards Association always has their meeting at the Holiday Inn. The Adirondack Area School Board Association has their meetings at the Queensbury Hotel. And in general, they have speakers. Um, we've had speakers uh, from um, the law firms that provide legal counsel to school districts talking about legal issues. We've had representatives from the State Education Department come and speak. We've had um, people come and speak about things like uh, health and wellness within schools, et cetera. They're great meetings. The district pays for it. And if you can go, you should go. So um, I just want to put that pitch out there. I will be attending the meeting on uh, the 22nd up in Lake George. Um, but if you have any questions, you could reach out to me on that. Old business. Any old business from the district? No old business from the board. So. I just want to bring up at this time um, something related to our uh, future search for a permanent superintendent. So um, I want to surface this to the board members now. And um, you can comment now or you can think about it and we can um, have comment at the next board meeting on it. But um, my thought was that we wanted to have our opening of schools take place, the first couple of weeks of schools. And after that, I've started to work with the Wish We BOCES in terms of the content for surveys out to our stakeholder groups. So that would be um, our, our community, that would be our um, staff, and the staff gets kind of broken up in the um, the, edge, uh, the professional teaching faculty, the support staff, transportation facilities and that nature, and the administration. And the surveys you know, have questions about um, what do they think is important for uh, characteristics for our superintendent. And it's a way <coughs> for us to start to gather input um, from the various stakeholder groups uh, in our community. So just 
surfacing that, that that was kind of the timeline that I was thinking of. Again, I don't know if anyone has an immediate reaction, um, but I was going to let us get through the first couple of weeks of school before we started asking um, these groups to concentrate on something other than just the, the opening weeks of school. Any comment, any concerns? I just have one question. Um, yes. When it comes to the surveys, I, I thought it was helpful during the Meet the Candidates night um, that we allowed the um, community to submit questions that they would like to see asked uh, during interviews. I don't know if that's a possibility or um, what is contained in the surveys that we're going to be sending out. Sure, so the survey has specific targeted questions and then it also will have the opportunity for people to submit comment, to submit a, um, you know, something they would like to ask a potential um, superintendent candidate. There will be the ability to have free-form text be submitted. Any other questions, immediate comment? Okay. Thank you. So, new business. So our first resolution will take a little bit of discussion, but first we have to have the motion. So may I have a motion to approve resolution number 193, appointment, Board of Education. So moved. Second. Okay. So um, this resolution is <coughs> about uh, that in July we had a board member, Wayne Evans Jr., resign from his position. The board has the responsibility and uh, to uh, fulfill that position. And um, I've shared that we have a candidate uh, for that position. The candidate is Dr. Julia Routbort Baskin. She is a long-term village resident and mental health professional who has experience being a parent of two Boston Spa graduates. So she's had her students go through all levels of our district schools. Um, she has experience working in multiple educational settings and is currently employed at Skidmore College as the Associate Dean of Student Affairs for Health and Wellness. Uh, she is a licensed clinical psychologist, earned her PhD from the University of Michigan, where she completed both the child and adult clinical tracks. In her position as Associate Dean, Julia has oversight of the three departments on campus that deliver clinical and prevention services to students, health services, counseling center, and health promotion. And through strategic planning, collaboration, and coordination of clinical services, she's charged with helping to create a resilient, responsive, and healthy campus community where students, faculty, and staff are informed and engaged around health and wellness issues. And so again, with our um, focus on student well-being, after effects from the years of hybrid and or remote learning. Um, I feel that she would be an excellent uh, candidate to serve as an appointed member. And just for everyone's information, um, that uh, term will be until the results of the next election, which will be in May 2023. So when there is someone who has been duly elected um, to fill the vacant board seat, they will take that position in May. Any questions, comments from the board members? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution passes. So we are going to administer the oath of office, please, to Dr. Routport Baskin, and she is here, and we are going to have a seat for her as well. And once she is appointed, she has the power to be a voting member of our board.
and please come join us as a sitting board member. Jason? Yes. I just wanted to, well, first welcome you to the board, um, but also just to remind anybody who was not um, able to view either of our last two board meetings that one of the reasons for why the board took this measure was at a considerable savings um, to the district and to get somebody in place to assist us with our permanent search for a superintendent. Thank you for reiterating that. Yes, we had discussion as a, um, a business item, first new business and an old business item that um, having a special election would cost the district somewhere between ten and twenty thousand dollars. We would have to um, have time periods involved, and we would um, have a delay in filling the position. So we were all in agreement that um, going with an appointment would um, suffice here. May I have a motion to approve resolution number one ninety four budget transfers? So moved. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution number 194 passes. May I have a motion to approve resolution number 195, award of bid, fall transportation? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution number 195 passes. I have a motion to approve resolution number 196, district and building safety plans. So moved. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution number 196 passes. I have a motion to approve resolution number 197, obsolete textbooks. So moved. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution number 197 passes. I have a motion to approve resolution number 198, authorized settlement. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? You're going to abstain. Thank you. We have one abstention. Resolution number 198 passes. I have a motion to approve resolution number 199, agreement, professional services. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution number 199 passes. I have a motion to approve resolution number 200, placement of students with disabilities. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution number 200 passes. We have a motion to approve resolution number 201, placement of preschool students with disabilities. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolution number 201 passes. Resolutions number 202 through 220 are recognized as a consent agenda for the purpose of Board of Education action. I have a motion to approve resolutions number 202 through 220, the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? And I just want to point out that it, within the consent, resolution number 203 is accepting the resignation of Daniel Connor as interim superintendent of schools. And resolution number 208 is the appointment of Dr. John Leo Duca as our interim superintendent of schools. Any other discussion? Not hearing any. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Resolutions number 202 through 220, the consent agenda passed. Uh, clerk, did we want to do the, um, the appointment? 
for the interim superintendent? Oh. Yes. Thank you. Duca, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the State of New York in the United States, and I'll faithfully discharge the duties of interim superintendent of schools according to the best of my ability. Keep this on right there. Okay, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> and I will ask Dr. Duca to take the seat to my right and he will be providing a brief um, summary of our opening days. Yes, um, I just want to say that I'm, I'm grateful for this opportunity to be the interim superintendent uh, for this school year. Um, so we had an opening day yesterday, um, staff across the district so excited to welcome our students back. Um, right. Our buildings and grounds look fantastic. Um, you know, walking around and, and, and meeting with a lot of the other schools, just, just so um, fantastic to see those kids smiling um, and, and, and just really polite. You know, I, I'm down at the elementary schools and the, the kids are, hi, hello, hi, you know, and it's just really, uh, and they don't know me. And, and so it just a, it's just a really nice uh, opening to school. Um, you know, we're getting back to what we, what we do, what we love, and that's educating our students. Um, you know, as we move forward, we'll continue to reflect and, and make adjustments. I do want to thank everyone um, for their patience as we work through, you know, some of the opening day glitches, especially with transportation. Um, that team has been working tirelessly to make sure that we are running smoothly and the work will continue. And we'll, we'll, we're just looking to make improvements um, day in and day out. And so um, that is what I have as far as um, opening day. Thank you. And would you briefly speak to um, the plans that are known, actions that are being taken sure. in terms of support for the high school? Yeah. yeah, we have a great team at the high school, you know, great staff. Um, we, we are, um, you know, in, in the planning phase of bringing someone on to, to support uh, the high school building, high school staff and students. Um, and so as we get closer to that being finalized, I can provide more details. Great, and certainly at this moment you are splitting your time between superintendent duties yeah. and support for the high school. Yeah, at this, at this moment I, I am kind of wearing both hats right now, yes. Okay, just wanted to make sure that we all have the comfort level that our, our high school is not being left no. in the lurch. No, not at all. Which I know you would not, you would not allow given your um, many years of, of excellent work there. Okay, thank you. Uh, do we have anyone from our associations? Normally we have the opportunity for comments, statements from our associations. Do not think we have anyone. Uh, PTA announcements? Uh, yeah, I just have a, a few announcements uh, with uh, regarding meetings of the PTA. Uh, middle school PTA will be having their meeting on September 15th at 7 p.m. Uh, I do believe Dr. Duke will be speaking at that meeting. Uh, also on September 15th, Goran Creek PTA will be hosting a meeting at 7 p.m. That meeting will be held on Zoom. Um, on the 22nd, the Milton Terrace PTA will have a little meet and greet before Meet the Teachers Night at 6 p.m. And then on Wednesday, uh, oh, sorry, is it Wednesday? Yes, yeah, Wednesday, September 28th is uh, after the Meet the Teacher Night at the Wood Road PTA. The Wood Road PTA will be hosting a meeting that day. Thank you. And uh, board members, I encourage you to have as much, um, you know, interaction with the PTAs as you time allows in your schedules. I will uh, try and make some of the initial meetings just to introduce myself and say hello to the PTA members. It's something I've done for the last two or three years as they've had meetings in person um, with the brief interruption when meetings were not in person. And certainly for all our parents and caregivers out there, 
uh, anything you can do to, to support our, our PTAs and our high school. PTSA just really adds to the, the enrichment of our students, our, our PTAs and our high school. PTSA just do absolutely wonderful work and thanks to all of uh, the parents and caregivers who volunteer as officers for those organizations and make all of the, the programs and the, the special extra things the PTA does possible. So thanks to all of those folks. I think we're at the second time for public comment. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, we've got the uh, same guidance that I shared before. Um, I will try and give folks a heads up as we get to the three minute mark to please try and um, conclude your remarks. First up, Chris Dubuque. First, I just want to wish congratulations and Welcome, Mrs. Baskin, and congratulations, and welcome, Mr. Duca. Well, no welcome's needed. You've already been here. <laughs> uh, I tend to come up, and I know mostly focus on, I'm sure, a lot of policies that I disagree with uh, as a parent. I'm a concerned parent. I have four beautiful children, and I stand up for what I believe I need to stand up for when it comes to my daughter and my three sons. That's just who I am. That's who I always be. That's how I role model for them, to stand up for what they believe in as well. I do like to give credit where credit is due, and I do want to point out that the high school orientation was a success. Again, uh, my son went through a lot last year, uh, as most of you know, with not even being welcome in his own synagogue because he wasn't vaccinated. And again, this was his community that he was part of uh, since he was a baby, essentially, and wasn't even allowed in to make his bar mitzvah due to a policy that we disagreed with, and they weren't willing to accommodate, even though we were willing to bend whichever way we needed to so he could have that very special moment in his life. Uh, this school was wonderful in the middle school. Obviously, he was stepping up this year at the high school, a different experience. We, wanted to, we were a little bit concerned. Uh, he's a lovable young man, but he's a bit quirky in his ways, and was he going to be accepted in the high school? Uh, obviously, some of these policies that we also stand against are confusing for someone like my son who doesn't perceive reality the same way most of us do as well. So that was one of the concerns that I brought up, not just for my daughter, but also for him as well. He doesn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but there are some things that clearly just make him uncomfortable, and he doesn't want to speak out about that because, again, He's always thinking of others before he thinks of himself. Uh, I do want to point out, though, this community has always been wonderful for almost every single one of my kids. There's a reason why we've stayed in the school, why we've stayed in this district. Uh, I also have seen some representatives here from my village as well that also sit in positions, and I've always loved the village of Boston Spa, too. It's been a very welcoming uh, place as well for my family. And I strongly recommend if any of you, I know some of you go to other board meetings to sort of get best practices to bring back and hopefully improve these board meetings. I would also recommend, although they can be a bit uh, exciting at times, attend a local village meeting for the village of Boston Spa. And I'll tell you what you're going to find there is you're going to find people that disagree almost on everything, on every issue. But when it comes down to the community, it comes down to literally getting their hands dirty, you can find them on Whistle Park volunteering their time with people that sometimes they disagree with quite vehemently to better the community. That's all we're asking here tonight. And again, thank you for addressing the community and, and trying to provide some clarification. Uh, I, I still would welcome an apology made on the record. Uh, uh, forgive me for saying this, but policy be damned. Uh, it, it's just human decency. Uh, if you say something that you think might have offended someone uh, and you think an apology is owed, do the, do the decent thing. Role model for the kids, uh, role model for the community. Uh, but with that being said, like I said, we ke we'll keep coming here, and we're not here to try to make your job any more difficult. I know you're volunteering your time, and I know many of you have come up to me after meetings and spoke about vacations you're going on, or dance classes our kids have shared, or uh, sporting events in other states you're going to. Some of you know members from uh, my own Jewish community. Uh, again, uh, this has, for the most part, been a relatively welcoming community, but all we're asking, and I still like to bring solutions and suggestions, put together a parent 
committee to meet with the board so when these policies come up maybe we get a different point of view from both sides of the community and we can work together to find common ground because again we're doing this for our children we're doing what's best for them and I go back to that speech about false dichotomy it's important we show kids you don't need to fall in one area or the other policy or law you, there's a common middle ground that we can reach as a board as a community that our kids should also be seeing us do and having those conversations uh, so again I, I pitched it last year until I was blue in the face members of our community have pitched it and I'll pitch it again I strongly suggest this board considering putting together a parent board uh, committee meeting or committee again doesn't have to be anything large it doesn't have to take up the auditorium I know you're very busy and you donate a lot of your time on top of having your own families and your own jobs but again I've always been proud of this district I think it has led the way in many ways I've been proud of my village I think that has led the way in many ways but again we all can make improvements but we have to have dialogue this back and forth two minutes here three minutes there emails uh, it, it's not working uh, for some definitely turbulent things that I think we need to discuss as a community because again these impact our children and our community as a whole thank you thank you Brian Gray I'd like to address the board. Thank you very much for the opportunity to speak. Um, I was at the last meeting and I was sparked to participate and be active because of the August 4th email that I took offense to. Uh, you'll hear some of that in my remarks. Um, I did not know that Do Mr. Duca is Dr. Duca. Congratulations and on being interim superintendent. I appreciate the presentation. It was student academic focused. The last meeting I was at I do not believe there was an utterance of any academics at that school board meeting, so thank you. Um, but that's my segue into what I would like to say today. This school is intended to allow students to learn. The environment needs to be conducive to learning. Um, so I'd like to speak about an ongoing violence, drug use, drug sales within the Wells First School and in the district. I spoke two weeks ago, Jason provided me with a response by email and included a report of reported violence over the last five years, including pre-pandemic data. That report did not address the drug abuse and drug sales in the school. He said that violence, according to the report, is trending downward. This fits a narrative of decreased violence. Reported incidents that fit a narrative of downward trend of violence is very telling. This indicates to me that there may be a trend of promoting an agenda is presented as following a narrative, as I use air quotes which, like a district-wide email that stated that those who do not accept the current trends regarding gender identity and the many accommodations that go along with that concept were accused of having out-of-date thinking. Again, that was an offensive term. We've heard that earlier this evening. I would like to reiterate that. Cancel culture is what is out-of-date. Please do not engage in cancel culture. Allow people to speak. Allow dissension to be heard. Allow me to ask several questions that you can reply to by email, Jason, if you will. It, is each incidence where there is a restroom partition, we're talking about the men's room where there's urinal um, partitions between each porcelain uh, fixture. If they're torn off the restroom wall, is that considered, considered a reported incident? And did those incidents appear on the report? I wonder. If they were not reported since the perpetrator is unknown, those many incidences on many destroyed partitions, would they make your report? Are the multiple violent fights at the bus loop at dismissal, are they captured on video and shared on social media? Now, are they included in the report? The fights break up, the students involved disperse, and they run away. Are those multiple incidences included in a report? Additionally, what a report like that does not show is the students who refuse to use restrooms. Please hear me. This is not isolated. Students who refuse to use restrooms during the school day and restrict their bodily functions until they get home where they feel safe. This presents a health concern in addition to a safety concern. I hope that was heard. Will the partitions be replaced since you are under the impression, based on the report, that violence is decreasing? I did take a tour of the school again this, this evening before coming here. 
There are no partitions between the men's urinals, yet there's hardware that's remaining, holes in the walls where they used to be affixed, and there was a promise of partitions in the um, dressing rooms for the privacy of the students who are feeling uncomfortable. I went to the locker room for the men's room. I didn't, I'm male, by the way. I respected the gender of those who use other restroom facilities than I do, and so I only went into the men's locker room. There is a vinyl shower curtain, and I wonder when will the violence occur to tear that off, and there is therefore no more a partition that was promised. But it's there this evening, it's there. Um, so the time and resources went in to put the partitions in the locker room. Will the restroom urinals, um, that is a reasonable request to have them reinstalled, can they be replaced promptly? What about the students who are too fearful to report violence? Are the reports included in that report? I understand that you can't respond to a report of unknown, but if there's a culture of fear and intimidation against those who file a report, that won't show up on the report. Isn't fear and intimidation what brought the school to be accommodating to the gender confusion population? Speaking of accommodation, when or where will the school draw the line on these accommodations? I expect the next trend to be addressed is the furry community. It will not be too long before, before the furry students begin requesting litter boxes, and if they do, will the school honor that request? When mainstream students make requests, is that where the school claims that reasonable request for a safe and drug-free school is too much to ask? I would like to see a school board agenda um, item that includes addressing violence in the school, regardless of the data on the report that could very well include underreported violence, although the report promotes your current agenda. Speaking of the agenda, I went online. The agenda is not printed in advance. We only get a copy when we walk through the door. Second of all, I went looking back to prior video recordings of these meetings. I did not find that on the school's website. Can this all be updated in the sake and in the name of transparency, I ask. So I spoke two weeks ago. Two days later, my son was cut from what he was told by the coaches was a no-cut soccer team. So is the school retaliating against parents who speak out in dissent? I hope this is not the case. I'm going to be keeping close eye on my son's educational and extracurricular involvement and opportunities. I am hopeful there will not be a pattern of retaliation against students whose parents speak out on their behalf. To those viewing from home, I'd like to ask you something. If you agree with me, please show up to these public meetings. People spoke this evening in support of um, making the school board and the administration accountable. So these, come into these meetings, please feel free to speak. If we do not speak out, then the board's actions will be condoned if there are no voices of consent. Thank you for your time and thank you for your involvement. Thank you for your comments, they are heard. Um, Jason Gertler. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. Tonight, we're here to show support for our community. As you can see, most of us are wearing Scotty Pride colors, Boston Spa Pride. Thank you very much. I stand together with all of you. And we all stand with all students. We believe that all children deserve fair and equal treatment. We also believe that our community deserves fair and equal treatment treatment, which we did not receive on August 4th when the letter sent to the entire community was penned from the desk of the board president calling concerned parents harmful, out of date, and dangerous. Nothing could have been more divisive. There has been no apology or retraction. Now, this action may or may not have been coincidentally responsible for the sudden resignation of the former interim superintendent. We can only assume, but it seems pretty coincidental to me. Also at that meeting, it was decided that an interim board member would be appointed by the board in lieu of an election to save a few thousand dollars when we know 
that there are millions of dollars of federal grant money available. An election is the only way for the community to be properly represented on this board. Back to that last meeting on August 3rd, when a board member was trying to convey a message, was immediately reprimanded mid-sentence by the board president for doing so. Then, immediately following, two members were allowed to address the audience directly and the news cameras while soapboxing their progressive ideals. This is not proper leadership. I respectfully demand a resignation from the board president because you, sir, have proven that you are not a leader. Thank you. Jason Severia. Again, I'll stay. I'm Jason Severia, uh, 936 Route 67. Right down the road here. <clears throat> On Wednesday, January 12, 2022, the student in Loudoun County, Virginia, that the parent was referring to during the October board meeting was found guilty on two counts of sexual assault in a school bathroom. That is a fact. Again, another situation where this very board does not listen to these parents and instead twists and bends the narrative in a way that demonizes members of this community. This parent had genuine concerns about co-ed bathrooms and co-ed locker rooms and used facts to justify those feelings and or fear. This parent in no way stated at any time that this will happen in our district. At no time did this parent profess that transgender students were a danger to our student body. On the contrary, the statement was posed as a question directed at you all as to what measures would the district be taking to make sure all of the students would be safe, all. It was said many, many times in that meeting. Mr. Law, you cannot cancel facts. You cannot sit there and say that you have evidence and then not provide it. Me, Last Mr. week, Barry, I submitted a FOIL announce, request for this evidence and to, to date, not a single piece of factual evidence has been provided. I will continue to wait for this evidence Maybe by the time it gets here, my beard will be this big because it's already been proven that the committees you form and when you submit a FOIL request, it doesn't happen. You people do not listen. And you wonder why people are upset. I think it makes you happy that we, we go home and we stew over this stuff, that we get angry, we're, that we're so confused. You sat on information all year long that could have quelled the fears of this community. Every single one of you, maybe not you because Mr. you're new. Mr. Severia, please don't be pointing your finger at people. The whole board and whatever committees you, you, you form, you had this information. And it took Dr. Duca, who in my opinion, is the only true leader in this room besides those two sheriff's off deputies that are sitting back there. That's on this side of the room. There's a bunch of leaders back here. You need to make some changes. You need to resign, and now you need to resign. Uh, Mr. Siriani, do we have the ability to put up the district website? We do. Can we do that, please? We can address Mr. Gray's question, please. And if we can broadcast that on the, uh, the feed as well, that will help all our folks at home. 
be happy to run through and show you exactly where the, the board agendas are and the documentation um, out there. So now this is being shown on the live stream here. So to address the issue of where documentation is on our website, under the Board of Education banner, I gotta put my eyes on, Board of Education banner, um, on the right, the 20, or excuse me, the left, the 2022-2023 agendas. If you click on that link, it will have all of the agenda documents. And as we move forward in the 2020-23 meeting documents link, that is where we'll have um, supporting documents for uh, policies and committees as well. So just want to make sure that that's there for everyone. I'm sorry, you do not have the floor. You do not have the privilege of the floor. So Great Thank you. Thank you. the board does have reason to adjourn into executive session for matters related to uh, appointment, employment, promotion, demotion, discipline, suspension, dismissal, or removal of any particular person or corporation. We will not be returning to the open meeting from our executive session. I have a motion to adjourn into executive session. Oh. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions?